Hey YouTube, Savandras here. Today I'll be teaching you a few Toons Good tips that you may have missed. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So the first thing we'll be learning today is how to do an easy camera shake. So first off, you'll want to have all of your layers set up, then you'll want to add a camera layer. And from there, we're just going to hop onto the right sidebar. We're gonna go to effects and we're gonna click noise. Now, the first thing we'll see with noise is that it says position Y. That means that our noise effect will be moving up and down, which will make our camera basically jitter up and down, like as we can see. So when we play, it's going to just continuously move up and down. Now, the way we can control this is we can take off the noise effect on certain keyframes. So we can make a keyframe here for noise. And then if we only want it to play for a certain amount of frames, we can make a keyframe where if we want it to stop and we can set our minimum and maximum values to zero. And when our minimum and maximum values both are zero, the camera will stop shaking. Now, something we can also do is if we wanted to add a stronger effect, our values basically control the strength of our effect. So, how about we turn this up times 10? Instead of doing negative 10 and 10, we'll do negative 100 and 100. And this will just make our camera shake even more. As you can see, it goes crazy when it starts at two seconds. Another thing is you can also change the noise property to be on the X axis instead. So it will move left to right as we can see. Now if we play our animation, the camera just jitters left and right instead. Before we get to the next part of the video, I'd like to shout out ESR really quickly. They sent me this really nice magnetic case for my iPad Air 11 inch. This keyboard case comes with a full row of function keys as well as a full size trackpad. The trackpad is really helpful because it allows me to use all of my regular iPad gestures without having to use a mouse. It also has a tab on the back that can be used as a stand. This has been great for using my iPad for drawing as well as just using it for leisure. What I like about this case is that it's very thin. It doesn't hurt the look of my iPad and it's very light. I can detach the bottom keyboard for shortcut keys when I'm drawing and has a really protective slot for my Apple Pencil. Thanks again to ESR for sending this. You all can use my code SAV25LNE on their website to get 25% off site-wide. They also sent me this nice clear MagSafe case for my iPhone 17. It really makes the color shine. Now let's move on to our next tip. Now tip number two also has to do with the camera, but this time it's related to creating a parallax effect. As we can see, a parallax effect is where the background moves slower and the foreground moves faster through your animation. The way you set this up is you're going to create a parallax effect on your layer. So I'll take you through it. Here I've created a foreground, which are these black leaves up here, a middle ground, which is this gray, and a background, which are these trees and mountains. Now we're going to apply a parallax effect on each of these layers. So we're going to click the sidebar, we're gonna click animation layer, and then we're going to add a parallax effect. So basically, the way the parallax effect works is the further it is on the depth slider, that means the slower it will move on the camera. Basically, the camera will treat it as if it's far away. So because I just added a parallax effect on the furthest away layer, which is the background, we're going to set our parallax effect to about 85. On our middle ground layer, we'll put it to about 34 and for the foreground we'll put it at one now we're going to go to our camera and we'll see that right now we still don't have any movement and this is because we need to make our camera move for the parallax to take effect so we're going to add a position keyframe on our camera and we're going to start our camera over here and we'll see that as we move the camera with the parallax effect on, it ends up moving all these different layers. 
So we're just going to move our camera to the right. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so everything stays together. And then I'm going to add a keyframe at the end and I'm going to move my camera all the way to the left. And now let's see how that animation plays out. So it went pretty well. Something you could also do to tune this up is you can go to your camera layer and in your keyframe settings, you can play with the easing to make it go work in a different way. So I'll set it to linear. And now we're just getting a straight, slow movement where the background is barely moving and the foreground is moving fast. Next up, tip number three is about the quick shape. Now, a lot of you may already know what quick shape is, but I think you just may be missing one part of it. So if you don't know what quick shape is, it's basically whenever you draw a shape and you hold at the end of your stroke, you can make a shape and then you can play with the size of it. And after you're done with that, you can even change the vector curves in it before you rasterize it. And you can do this for a lot of shapes. You can do this for straight lines. You can do this for squares. You can do this for circles, ovals, rectangles, and so on. Something that you may not know about quick shapes is that after you make them, if you click on the vector curves, you can change the size of your quick shape. And that really helps with nailing exactly the perfect line that you want to get. Moving on, we have more tips for vector tools. If you use a vector tool and then you use a smudge tool, it will basically just move your strokes a little bit as if you're liquefying your vector strokes. This could really help you to fix up your drawings if you're drawing with a vector tool. Another thing we can do with vector is we can draw off the canvas as far as we want. Your choice is yours. Something that also works well with vectors is the fill brush. So if you don't know what a fill brush already is, you can just use the fill brush for like going to your tools and going to fill and using the pre-made brush. I got rid of them. So if you need to make your own fill brush, you just go to edit brush and you click on autofill. You make sure it's toggled on. And then when we draw, we'll get a fill. Now you can change these to the same color so it looks more natural. But yeah, it works pretty well and it's really good for coloring in your animations as well. One last powerful thing we can do with vector is that we can cut our vector strokes for cleaner animations. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's say if I were to draw a plus with a vector stroke brush. And you need to make sure it's on vector stroke, not vector shape. If my brush is also set to vector stroke, then I can cut where these lines intersect. It creates an invisible tool. So that's something you may not be aware of in Toon Squid. This really helps when you're trying to draw something and you wanna keep the perfect lines you've already made and just get rid of the bad parts of it. Now, of course, my drawings right here aren't perfect, but it's just an example. You can even cut multiple strokes at once. Something else we can do in Toon Squid now is also we can add keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know already, you just go to Actions, go to Settings, and you go to Keyboard. Now, all of these keys highlighted in, in blue are keyboard shortcuts I changed, and all the gray ones are the original keyboard shortcuts. You can just click X on them if you ever want them to return to the original keyboard shortcut, and then you can just click on it and press a key to change it. And it goes through very quickly. And then if I want to click left and right on my keyboard, which is what I set my custom keyboard shortcuts to, it flips me through the timeline. 
Our last Toon Squid secret tip, which isn't so secret, is that we now have a portrait mode. All we need to do for this, of course, is to turn our iPad vertical and we will be able to draw in portrait mode. Really cool. That's all for today. I'll be back with more Toon Squid tips. If you enjoyed this video, please hit a like and subscribe. And if you want to find more difficult things to do in Toon Squid, I have a few tutorials up. I have some for bones, how to do easy lip syncing, and I have a full blown large Toon Squid tutorial that you can check out on my channel. I appreciate you watching. Peace.